morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly webinar series. Um, we do these shows every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, every week of the year, minus one. Um, where we cover a variety of library activities and topics. Um, we have, um, if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. We do record the show every week and it is posted to our Encompass Live website and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can see, um, um, get those archives and watch any of our previous, today's show and any previous shows. Um, both the live show and the archives are both free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anybody who you think might be interested in any of the topics that we have coming up, we have on the show, either the ones coming up on our upcoming schedule or any of our archives. Um, this is actually the 10th year of Encompass Live, which is kind of sounds a little crazy to me, <laughs> but um, this is the beginning of our 10th year Jan this year. Um, we started in January, 2009. So there are a lot of archives that we have. So there's plenty of topics there that you can go and um, see through. And I'll show you the, those two, as I said, at the end of today's show. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, uh, interviews, book reviews, uh, demos of software and products. Um, basically the only criteria we have for the show is that it is something library related, something libraries are doing currently, something we think they could be doing, uh, software, products, services, things we might want to share um, for them to, to, to participate and use. Um, we do have some sessions that Nebraska Library Commission staff are our presenters and that they speak about things we're doing here locally in Nebraska, but we do bring in guest speakers sometimes, um, both from Nebraska libraries and from across the country. And that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is uh, Susan McClellan. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, everyone. Money. And she is the executive director of the Millvale Community Library in Millvale, Pennsylvania. And so she's on the East Coast for us here. Um, and she's going to talk about um, a, a really, their, their library is a pretty unique library from what I've heard from chatting with her about some of the many great things they're doing. Um, she's going to talk about some of the things that they've been doing there to um, reach out and be part of their community. So I will just hand it over to you, Susan, to go ahead and start your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be with everyone uh, this morning over the phone, and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh um, in 1996, so I've been a librarian for quite some time now. Um, and at my last job, um, well, first of all, I have a history of working in small libraries. And at my last job, I was director of the Coriopolis Memorial Library, which is about um, 20 miles from where I currently work and it was another small library and I did a lot of programs there and I decided to leave there after seven years because the opportunity presented itself here in Millville and it's a small community and I was uh, driving uh, 30 minutes each way to work every day and the library I work at now is less than five minutes from my house that plus the community here is wonderful and I'm very familiar with the neighborhood so I decided to um, start working here three months ago and I absolutely love it here. I feel like I have found uh, a home and just a wonderful fit in my career after many years of being in like maybe four or five different small libraries um, and a larger library as well. Um, it, the neighborhood is wonderful. Everyone is so supportive. I just feel like incredibly blessed to be here every day. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the library first. As you can see on my first slide, this is the outside of our building. Um, our mission statement is more than a library, an agent of positive change. So the outside of the building has um, three apartments above it. Um, we, the building used to be an electronics shop. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the library. The project started in 2007 when residents Brian Wolovich and Tricia George discussed the idea of a community library doing up of Millville. 
um, a survey of the residents of Millville, and we serve about 3,700 residents here. And the survey showed that there was a great interest in having a library in the community. So the property um, is from 209 to 213 Grant Street, which is one of the main streets in our small community of Millville. They purchased the um, property for $59,000. And they had an, an initial architect who did some of the work for free. And then they got some grants to start developing um, the and reno renovating the building. So the building that was here, it was gutted for the library, and the adjacent space was used to store some equipment. So one upstairs uh, apartment had been rented, and a second one was installed to provide some income for maintenance of the library. So right now we have three apartments um, above the library. So um, on our next slide is the founder of the library, Brian Wolovich. Um, Brian is well known throughout Millville and the Pittsburgh area. He won a, an award in Pittsburgh for an, being an outstanding volunteer uh, six years ago now. He currently is a sixth grade teacher. He has a wealth of other skills. Um, and after five years of hard work, planning, and fundraising, um, the library opened in 2013. He spent hundreds and hundreds of hours um, opening the library. So um, five years ago, he had hoped that the library would evolve into a community hub for meetings, tutoring, classes, and organizing. And so today, it's a very thriving hub for the community. So the library came to life in 2008 with a summer children's program and a small collection of materials. A lot of the children's books that we have in our collection were actually donated at the time. So New Sun Rising is a local nonprofit, and they led the library effort. And in August 2013, um, the library moved into the building where we're at. Prior to this time, um, the library books were in um, a different uh, building in town. So hundreds of volunteers spent thousands of hours transforming the space where we're at. Since the 2013 opening, programming and resources have expanded even further. So youth and adults from a United Church of Christ in Millville built a deck out back several years ago. Um, this 2014 plan included installing solar panels on the library rooftop. We now generate more solar electricity than the library can actually use. Um, other goals a, a few years ago um, were educating the public about the benefits about the solar power and completion of the construction on the remaining office space. So since our opening, we have expanded even further uh, inside. Our collection now includes more than 8,000 items. This includes audio books and DVDs. Right now, we average probably 65 or 70 visitors a day. So this is a picture which shows our solar roof. The solar roof has um, allowed the library to remain open longer, and we now offer more community programming. So starting in April 2015, we were able to generate 100% of our electricity through the solar roof. The funding um, for the solar roof and the panels came out of a grant from a foundation in Pittsburgh called the Hillman Foundation. The library was also able to lead efforts to fully solarize the Imagine Building located next door and partially solarize the Millville Community Center. The Millville Community Center is about three blocks from the library. Thinking of the library as the epicenter of the community, 
We hope that one day all of our south-facing rooftops will have solar arrays powering the community with clean and renewable energy. So, so Susan, I have a question about that before you move on to the next part of your presentation. Sure. Um, that's pretty, That's that whole solar thing is so amazing. I love the roof is just completely covered, it looks like, right? Yes, it is completely much, completely covered all the space you can possibly panels. use. <laughs> Yeah, and we have a solar meter, which I uh, read every month on the side of the library building. And so um, we do get a, a, a few dollars back uh, every month from the surplus of solar energy. I was going to ask about that. What do you, you said you do, you produce more than you need. And as one, that's what was been my question is what happens with that extra? So you just get a, a refund or something? It's not, you're not it's like. It's a sleep. small it's refund check, no. yes. Okay. So connected to the library, in fact, I'm like right beside it now, is um, a um, honey, a Tupelo Honey Tea Shop, and it is run by uh, Millville, um, uh, Danielle, who grew up in Millville, and uh, her name is Danielle Spinolia, and she is, um, people call her the resident tea lady, and so she opened this tea shop, um, in fall of 2016, and she has vegan and vegetarian food in her tea shop, and it's fantastic. Every morning I come into work and have this incredible smells in the library from the tea shop next door. And we do a lot of um, uh, programs in conjunction with Danielle. Um, and so what is great about that is she brings a lot of foot traffic because our door is actually connected to the tea shop. Um, and so she has this great love of tea and great love of the library, and we have a great love of tea and food as well. So it's worked out fantastic for both of us. So um, Tupelo Honey Teas, they have a monthly book club, and so they actually uh, meet uh, sometimes in the library, sometimes in the tea shop. And so we actually did um, uh, what's called a Huga New Year event uh, with Danielle um, in January. And this event brought over 200 people into the library for the day because Danielle has probably um, 10 to 15 chairs in her shop. And so she set up vendors in the library throughout the day. We had someone making candles, and we had crafts. We had someone doing massages, um, aromatherapy, all different types of different workshops during the day. And this was all her idea. And so we had hundreds of people in the library throughout the day. Um, she also does a uh, knitting night. She does a um, – she is – theater groups that come in the library and people can take the food from the tea shop and eat in, in the library so that's very um, unique to us um, some libraries they discourage eating but we welcome food in the library all the time so um, the room I'm at right now because we have construction going on in the library we have um, new signing being put on right now and that's um, again through a grant um, so I'm in the, sitting in the library makerspace right now, and our makerspace was the first library makerspace among the Allegheny County libraries. And it's very small. It's essentially um, probably the the size of someone's kitchen if it were pretty small. So um, the majority of programming in our makerspace, it's just a co cozy small space that has like two small tables in it and we have like a rotating um not a cabinet but um just a re rotating storage space and we do have this the shel a few shelving units in the room we have yarn um places for kids to sew in here um and a small closet so in the summertime, we have what's called maker camps. 
These are free and they last for um, eight weeks and these have been going on for a few years now and people are now calling me, um, asking me about the maker camps. And so this will be my first year experiencing the maker camps. And so the um, maker camps would consist of an art camp, a nature camp, um, a fashion camp, um, whatever the maker educator decides to do for those eight weeks. And it would be two hours in the morning for the younger kids and two hours in the afternoon for the older kids. So we had a former maker educator, Nora, and she launched a program to integrate literacy and she developed these maker activity cards based on children's books. So for example, if there was a children's book where a young girl um, sewed something, then Nora made up a card relating to like a sewing project. And so she just got accepted to present at the South by Southwest conference um, in March and she's going to talk about um, our um, makerspace at that conference. So that's a wonderful, um, exciting opportunity to represent um, Melville and we're very excited for Nora. So Millville Community Library was named a MakerCore host site in 2014, and at that time it was only one of 35 maker education sites nationally. Since 2014, the makerspace has created many local and regional partnerships. We currently have partnerships with Carnegie Mellon University, the University of Pittsburgh. We have partnerships with um, a local pottery artist, um, um, some local artists um, here in Millville. So our current maker educator, his name is Roman Benty, and he's created many new programs and partnerships. Um, he recently did a um, mural project with um, uh, Tom Pottery, who um, is um, a maker, um, pottery maker who has his own pottery shop about three blocks from the library. Okay. So you can follow um, the Millville Makers. We're on Instagram at just Instagram.com at Millville Makers. And the library um, also has a site, it's just Millwell Community Library on Instagram. Uh, so next I'm going to talk about some of our programs. And so we pretty much have uh, one or two programs every day in the library. Um, we are closed on Mondays. On Mondays, we're closed. On Tuesdays after school, we have a volunteer. Her name is Joanne, and she comes in and does homework help. Um, and this is basically for school-age children. On Wednesdays, um, our maker educator, Roman, does um, different activities, which have included um, paper crafts. He's done stop animation with the iPad. He's done painting, mural making, jewelry making, um, making with felt, um, all different types of projects. On Thursdays, um, we have an open maker time for teens, uh, and um, we have guitar lessons for children ages eight and up. Now, this is something new uh, that we just started. So I thought it would be really cool to have a guitar maker space here because Roman actually plays in a band. Um, and I noticed when I first started working here that we have a lot of uh, children that come in and they have a strong interest in music. And these are mostly um, children that are um, 10 to 15 years old that are coming in after school. We have three or four boys in particular that were coming in with their guitars and they're just um, very into music. So um, back in November, I requested a donation of guitars from local music stores um, and Brighton Music Center, which is about three miles from the library, they donated three um, guitars to us in December and it was like a wonderful donation. It was 
had happened right before Christmas, so it was like we celebrated Christmas early at the library. It was fantastic. And we just had another guitar donated from um, uh, an area resident. So I'm in the process, Roman and I are in the process of writing this grant to get more music equipment for the makerspace. Now, since the room is really small, we're going to have to um, soundproof it somehow because the noise obviously is going to carry over into the Tupelo Tea Shop. So basically, we had the idea that um, we want to give kids something that they can learn and they can develop a musical skill set, um, and they're going to have fun while they're in the library as well. So the students that come to the music class, they don't have to be from Millville. Um, this is free, and they can come from anywhere. So um, Millville Library rocks. And I've never played a music instrument, and I think, like, now is my chance to learn. So this so, is a Susan, picture of you just said the um, Millville Library rocks. So are you working on this to having something to do with the summer reading program theme for this year, which happens uh, to be yeah. libraries Actually, rock? <laughs> Yes, actually, I think it would be very cool to have a library band, but I don't, um, well, I don't know that I have musical talent because I haven't tried yet, but we do have, um, I have another, I have a Vista volunteer on staff, and she plays the ukulele, so Ooh. I think it would be cool if we did have, like, a little rock band. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, so on the left, um, on my slide is Jackson, and Jackson is a volunteer who's also in a band, and he comes in and helps on Thursdays. Um, and we do get anywhere from five to ten uh, youth who come in, and they're very engaged with our guitars. And so um, we had the young lady in the picture who I think might be 12 or 13, and she asked if she could check out one of our guitar. So we cataloged it and we now have one guitar that Millville residents can come in and it gets checked out on the library card. So we just started doing that so people can c come in. And so that is something that's um, also very uh, unique. Um, so on Fridays, um, we have um, a program which won an honorable um, mention this past year. It was recognized by the Pennsylvania Library Association for um, a Best Practice Awards for Outstanding Efforts in Children's Programming. Um, and since I was not here, uh, working here at the time, I don't know who came up with the name for it, but it's called Small Fry Fridays. Um, at Small Fry Fridays is, a guessing they came up with a name because of small fry, like small children. And so um, we have someone that comes down from the Shaler North Hills Library, which is a larger library in our county. Miss um, Jan comes down and does story time for us. And the children are gen generally um, um, anywhere from maybe two to three years old that come. And then um, Jan does story time. Roman does like a mini maker craft with them. And then we have a free play with our early literacy toys after. Um, and so um, it's just like a very uh, relaxing day. And we get a, a lot of children for it. And they blow bubbles. And it's just a fun time. Um, every Saturday, we have free yoga from 10 to 11 a.m. for adults in the library. And then once a month, um, Roman does an adult maker Saturday, and this is free, or we have a suggested donation. So um, last month I did hardware jewelry making. Um, this Saturday we have someone coming to do fabric gami, which is similar to a quilting square. And I heard in the past they did, like, making of your own lip balm, um, We've had um, special guest speakers on a Saturday. So Saturday is more for our special uh, programs. 
I love um, that you have so many of the things in your maker space that are more like crafting and, and making things. Um, and it's not just, I, I, I worry that so many libraries think of maker space as technology and equipment and, and things like that and syncing on computers, but you've got so many different things you're doing. This is like the, the, the best of everything in, in maker spaces, I think, my personal opinion. <laughs> Well, we do have a 3D printer uh, in this maker space. We have the guitars in here right now. We have an assortment of everything. <laughs> uh, we, do, we do have iPads in here um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, we, have to, we have to put some things in boxes uh, um, and rotate some things out because the room is very small. Right, um, right. So, um, so last year for the maker camps, uh, there were two sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So um, last year was also the first year that the library was a summer food site, and that's the Pennsylvania Department um, of Education where uh, the kids can get a free lunch in the summertime. And so the kids would come in the morning, the smaller kids, and um, the library would serve them like a free, a free lunch. Um, and the lunch was done in partnerships with four uh, restaurants in Millville. And so in the afternoon, like the older kids would come to the camp. And I know that um, in the fashion camp, they used the sewing machine and they had a little fashion show at the end of the week. Um, and so that's something that I want to do this summer with the kids and make like recycled fashion. And I was thinking we could do like a rock and roll fashion theme to coincide with the theme libraries rock. Um, I know last year they also had uh, the Audubon Society brought an owl in one day, and they also um, took a boat and went on the Allegheny River. So this year our maker camp is going to include art camp, fashion camp, pottery camp. Um, we're also going to do uh, a week of music camp. Um, the library partnerships. We have um, a partnership with the Gardens of Millville. Oh, another thing we have at the library is we have four garden plots out back. And these were started, I believe, a few years ago. Um, and they are raised beds. And so this year, um, since we are a sustainable library, I'm going to learn about organic gardening and have like my own little garden plot out back. So this is very exciting for me because I haven't gardened since I, well, I grew up in Armstrong County, which is uh, probably an hour north of where I work. And so my parents used to garden as a kid. So I'm excited to like learn about or organic gardening. Um, so we have partnerships with our local school district, uh, Shaler North Hills Library, um, Millville Borough. Oh, another awesome partnership we have is the Millville Police Department. They have an officer which comes down on Tuesdays because we get a lot of after school um, kids in here. And so Officer Jen comes down and spends some time with the children, um, maybe one or two hours, as much time as she can. Um, on Tuesdays, and she spends time with the kids just to get to know them, and um, also the children get to know that, um, you know, the police is like a, a wonderful, um, they have a wonderful presence in our community as well, and the police and fire department help us with our um, Halloween party, which is sort of the Millwell Library signature event, and we get about 300 people that come through the library for our Halloween party. Um, we also have a partnership with North Hills uh, Community Outreach, um, and they um, they provide like free tax assistance to our area residents. Um, Millville is a food desert. Um, it's a small town of 3,700 people, so we don't have a um, grocery store in town. So if we have patrons that are in need of um, food or housing assistance or financial assistance, then um, we can send um, patrons in need to North Hills Community Outreach. They have a um, satellite office here in Millville, and they have been... Um, 
very wonderful to work with. Um, we also have partnerships with uh, the local colleges and universities in the Pittsburgh region. Um, we also have wonderful um, relationships with the businesses, the churches. Um, so it's great that this was already established when I started working here. Um, and I'm also working to develop um, um, and create new partnerships while I'm here at the library. So some future plans that I would like to work on um, is we have so many children coming in after school um, that are hungry and they um, get served like lunch early in the day um, and they um, want to eat, they bring in sugar and so um, I just wrote like several grants that I use the healthy food out of our community garden to um, make salsa and pesto and some healthy food in conjunction with um, Tupelo tea over the summer. Um, so I wrote some grants for that. And as part of the one grant, I incorporated in what it would look like if we could get money to get some canning equipment at Tupelo Teas and to teach the children about canning so that in the fall um, they would have some take-home food because 40% of children live below the poverty level. Um, we're in a low-income community and so I want to be able to make sure that the children do not go to bed hungry at night. Um, I think that having healthy food for the children around is very important and so um, we have um, had just started like um, I have a Vista volunteer Sheena who is amazing and she had just started like a Facebook campaign to raise some funds and we had five hundred and twenty dollars that was donated so far towards um, an after school program for towards getting some healthy food for the kids and so we've been using some of that money right now to feed the um, kids some sandwiches after school and so I would rather of course feed them uh, sandwiches than all the sugary snacks after school. Mm -hmm. Get them um, hooked on the good foods, yes. <laughs> definitely. Um, I don't know how much the kids are going to be into salad and produce over the summertime, but we're definitely going to give that a, a try. And, and I heard the kids... Involved in the, the canning and you know, making their own stuff, I think, is something that they would definitely be interested in and catch their attention. Well, I heard that last year the salsa was like a big hit. Um, uh -huh. And the pesto, so we're, I definitely want to try that this year. Um, another thing that I'm working on right now is um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was very uh, no, well known like years ago for manufacturing, and so um, since we do have a small maker space, I'm currently working on writing a maker to manufacturer grant, and um, so we don't have a lot of um, manufacturing industry um, in Millville itself and I'm looking to partner with maybe some local artists and um, I'm trying to picture in my head what this would look like in the future but I want to work with some local makers in the region and some local teens and my idea is to pair up the teens with some people in the manufacturing industry so that the teens learn some um, manufacturing skills so that um, they can go out into the workforce and be prepared and have skills and some technical skills when they graduate. Um, we're also working on um, a grant to create an air quality fellowship because um, we do not have like the cleanest air in Millville or in Pittsburgh itself. <coughs> Excuse me. In Pittsburgh <coughs> Um, does have a problem with air pollution. And, and that's also, you know, a national problem as well and a national concern. So um, also I want to add more business programs to the community because we do have um, a lot of small business and local owned business in Millville. And so I think that that is like a great need for a community as well. <coughs> 
Um, so at this time, I'd like to take some um, questions. Great. Yes. So anybody have any questions for Susan? Please do go ahead and type them into your uh, GoToWebinar uh, questions section. If you uh, have a microphone, you could use that as well. Um, go ahead and type in there. I can. I'm monitoring that and grab your questions. Um, I'm I, from the, at the beginning of your presentation, Susan. I was I was surprised. I did not realize that your library is so young. <laughs> Only about 10, 11 years you've had a li the library. Well, the library um, opened in 2013, so it's very young. It's the newest library in Allegheny County, and there okay. are 70 library locations in Allegheny County. So we so, are the smallest library in Allegheny County. Yeah. So, but it, but you said you had great support and um, um, requests for it, I guess, from the community. Yes, the community um, is very, very supportive of the library, and the borough is very supportive as well. Mm. Did you have any other libraries that are, before you had your own, were there libraries close to you that people would go to? What was the closest, what's the closest other location? Oh, uh, the closest uh, library to us is Shaler North Hills Library, where I used to work um, eight years ago. And that is probably a 10 minute drive. And that is a, a, a large library with probably, um, I'm going to say 140, 150,000 items. And so mm -hmm. we're, we are very small. Now, Millville is a walking community. And so the town really needed this library. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Awesome. Um, Okay. Oh, someone does have a question, and I'm not sure if you mentioned this. Someone wants to know if you get free tea from the the tea shop there. <laughs> uh, no, but but everything is wonderful at the tea shop. Hmm. That sounds like a great um, partnership you have with them, doing the classes and everything at the library. Um, definitely very creative. That's that's one that I've never heard of before. But um, having them right there next door to you makes it obvious. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful because we have the opportunity to um, partner with them and do a lot of creative programming together. Mm -hmm. And the tea shop has a wonderful um, reputation. Um, and Danielle, the owner, was just uh, profiled um, by um, a podcast in Pittsburgh called Better the Berg. And she is a sustainable restaurant as well. We have a lot of sustainable, like, green businesses in Melville. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, yeah, that's something that a lot of your community is very um, passionate about, um, especially with, you know, the solar that you said you're um, going to work on trying to expand that to more um, buildings in town? Yes. Awesome. All right. Ah, okay, here's a good question. Yeah, something I was wondering about too. We didn't get too much into that. Um, how does it work having the tenants above the library? You said there's some apartments above there, yeah, above so your there are, storefront? Yeah, so there are three apartments above the library. The tenants are wonderful. In fact, one of the tenants above the library was our former um, maker educator. And so everything has been fantastic with the tenants. Mm -hmm. And so they actually rent those apartments from the library, or is it from the town? How does that work? No, they rent from the library. Ah, okay. So it's a little income for you. Yes. So the library owns that whole whatever. You you're, you're said you got a couple of um, addresses wide, and then whatever's above it? Yes. Ah, okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, so the library has um, its own sustainability coordinator in the borough of Millville, and that person used to be like under, like supervised under the Millville Library. And right now, um, our sustainability coordinator is um, works for another nonprofit in town called New Sun Rising. Um, but his name is Zaheen Hussein, and he um, works on uh, initiatives for, like, clean air, um, water, and energy, and mobility in Millville. Um, and so he um, works to promote, like, resource energy in the community. 
and he was hired uh, several years ago, and so he um, worked with um, the solar, getting the solar panels on the mm -hmm. roof as well. Mm -hmm. How many staff do you have at the library besides yourself? Um, well, I'm the only full-time person at the library, and I had replaced someone who um, was at the library about 20 hours a week, but had put in a lot more hours at the mm -hmm. library. So I have um, one, R Roman works about, who's the maker educator, he works about uh, 20 hours a week. I have uh, Aminata, who works about, who's in high school, she works about uh, 15 hours a week, and I have Maria, who works about 15 to 20 hours a week, and then I have Sheena, who's um, a full-time VISTA volunteer uh, under AmeriCorps, so mm -hmm. that's one, two, uh, three, and a full-time VISTA volunteer who does um, community outreach. And obviously people from the community um, are I do volunteer, I assume, sometimes. I mean, that's how you got started from the beginning was volunteer. Right. We, right. we have um, Joanne, who does the volunteer uh, tutoring, um, and, and then we do have some volunteer groups that come in as well. Um, in the summertime, we will have volunteers that help with, with the community garden. Um, and we do have groups uh, from the University of Pittsburgh and then some other groups that will come in um, and help with, like, just general cleanup outside the building and inside the library as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. It's it's just, I was just I was very surprised but thrilled to hear at the very beginning of your presentation that you are a brand new library just started up we hear too many stories about libraries having budget issues struggling on the verge of or actually being closed the actually opposite of what you're doing and it's very um really bolsters you to hear that it's not like that everywhere it's you know there are libraries are still uh needed and desired in in places it's you know we just got to keep that in mind that it's it, it'll be okay <laughs> uh, we are actually um thriving and i have lots of ideas for programs um we are very utilized like we are very uh children focused here and we mm -hmm. are very utilized by the children um after school yeah that is a huge thing in a lot of libraries. Yeah, the whole, as soon as school lets out, the library is, like, filled. <laughs> now, I um, am trying to promote literacy more because I notice mm -hmm. that, well, I have a lot of people that come in um, for DVDs more so than books, but I think that happens at a lot of libraries. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm purchasing new materials and trying to get more people um, reading as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes sense, definitely. All right. Um, let's see. Um, I think maybe we might wrap it up. Anybody have any other questions you want to ask of Susan? Get them in before we wrap up today's show. Um, get them typed into your question section. And you want to you want to ask her about her the 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 library in Millvale and what they're doing. Um, oh, Why somebody have a question. They came in a little late. They weren't, and I. Don't remember how much you got into this. Someone does want to know um, if it was if, not sure if they mentioned earlier, but where does your funding come from? Your basic um, budget monies come from? Well, we get money um, from uh, Pennsylvania uh, state aid. We get money from uh, Millville, and we get money uh, some money from donations. But we also um, write a lot of grants. Um, like right now, um, we. Like last year, the summer maker camps were funded through a grant, and that's what we're hoping to do this year as well. And that, mm -hmm. um, but uh, some income comes from uh, the apartments, of course. But and we also get uh, some through Millville Borough, and then some through what's called in Allegheny County the Regional Asset District Tax, and that would get divided mm -hmm. up among all the libraries in Allegheny County. Oh, okay. So lots of different places you got to pull monies from. And I did notice that you did mention um, grants a lot, and that I think is some that I think is very important. That a lot of libraries, there are so many opportunities out there, and so many different places to get grants from and to get monies um, for what you might need to do. 
And it sounds like you're definitely on top of that. I wish more libraries would uh, reach out and it takes some time to do some of those grant writing, definitely, and get them all submitted. But Well, I like to write grants and I would say we have probably written about eight to ten in the last two months. Wow. Um, Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we we have but yeah we've been writing a lot of grants. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is um, Maria, who works here part time. Um, she is a former Vista volunteer, um, and I'm not sure exactly if it was her idea or someone else's. But we're in the process of starting a tool lending library, and the um, tools are in a like adjacent to the library. Um, sort of, I would call it like a basement area room, and the tools were donated, so there were going to be over 200 tools for checkout, and wow. these would include everything from a lawnmower to um, your basic power tools, like a drill to like a circular saw, and, and so we hope to have that uh, ready to go in a few months as well. So is where are you going to store all of that? That's the, that's my first thought. That many tools. How is that going to work? Well, um well, it's in a room like I mean connected to the library like a like a basement room. So it's already oh, okay. down there, but the uh the landing records are something that we're in the process of creating right now. Hmm. So people would have to physically come into the library, pick up the item and then return it. So hmm. these would not be items we're obviously not going to be like sending out um, a lawnmower to another library in delivery. We have um, a delivery system in Allegheny County where um, a van driver comes and takes uh, our materials to other libraries in the county. Um, they go to like a sporting center in our county, but oh, there yeah. are probably, I don't know if, if you have that in Nebraska or not. No, we do not have a statewide or any accounts or anything like that. We've um, it's been attempted to set something up, and just haven't been able to get it coordinated yet. But I know lots of other other states, many other states do have that same kind of thing—a delivery system among between the different libraries for doing interlibrary loans or things like that, sharing of resources. Yeah. Yeah. So we have countywide resource sharing. So our van driver probably goes from maybe eight to ten libraries within our region. So. Um, yeah, but the tools would be something they would have to pick up here and return here. And since we're sure. um, in a small community, that would be relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the idea with the tool landing library would be that it would obviously, um, we could do uh, tool education here mm -hmm. for people that might not know how to use those tools. And with it being a low-income community, it would help people that could not afford those tools oh, as yeah, well. Absolutely. I like the training part, the education, because I know there's many either either small handheld tools or even some of the more like uh, air compressed air type things that I would not have a clue what to do with. I'd I'm sure I have. I know I have uses for them, but I would be very nervous myself to sometimes use some of those more, you know, heavy duty things. Oh, I, kn I know. There are a lot of tools, and, like, I don't know how to use, like, a lot of my husband's tools. So, I mean, that would be, like, a great learning experience yeah. for me, so. Absolutely. All right. Anybody have any other questions? We're a little before 11 a.m. Central Time here, so if you do have anything else you want to ask, get it in, type it in there, and we'll get um, Susan to answer for us. Um, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can go to our website um, or follow us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here I'm going to, while well, I mentioned that, I'm going to pull back the present your screen sharing to my page here, to my computer. Um, this is a uh, student sessions here, session here on our website. And I did link to, I should open this up, uh, their, um, your library's website here. So if you want to know more about what they're doing, yeah. um, you'll be able to um, pop over here. And there's a link to your Instagram right on your page, which I did open up anyways when you mentioned it. I just decided to go and see what kind of things had been posted. So... Um, lots of, I like, look at the clay. Um, there's your guitar. Yeah, there's the guitar. Mm -hmm. Making phone cases, it looks like. 
or something? Yeah, so beautiful? we had a, a teen that wanted to make, she actually made a phone case out of parchment paper I brought in. I'm not exactly sure how that oh. worked with it, but yeah, she she had a great time doing it and pottery mm-hmm. and and some of the photos below are from the mini makers. Uh, and of course, mm-hmm. Slimer is very popular here, the slime making. Oh, yes. <laughs> So, yeah, definitely take a look there. There's a whole lot of things of all the different programs you have going here on your website. And when the recording is posted, it will include the, this link as well. So um, anybody who wants to will be able to get to that um, from our recording. All right. There I am. Okay. So... Nobody typed in anything at the last minute here, so I think maybe um, we'll wrap it up for this morning. Um, unless anybody does, you want to get one last question in before we go? <laughs> Type fast. <laughs> um, but otherwise, thank you so much, Susan, for being with us this morning. This was great. I when I saw your the information about your library that you had sent me, I was like very intrigued by all the different things you're doing. Um, with the solar and um, the makerspace and the, the having tenants above the library and everything. Lots of things that I, I, there's always new things I'm learning that libraries are doing out there, getting very creative and involved in their communities and just coming up with these amazing new unique ideas. Thank you so much, yeah. everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so I think we will wrap it up for today. So that will be um, today's show. Um, it has been recorded and will be available on our website. I'll show you over here. This is our Encompass Live website where we have our upcoming shows listed, but underneath all of our upcoming ones is a link to our archives, Archive Encompass Live sessions, where you can find all of our archives going back to the very beginning. Um, as I said, the beginning of the show, we started uh, Encompass Live in January 2009, and we do have all of our recordings here on the site, um, so you can find things going all the way back to the very beginning. Everything is posted, the, record, the video is posted to the Library Commission's YouTube account, and if there is any handouts or presentations or anything involved with it, we also include those as well, either links to them or links to SlideShare, wherever we post them. Uh, so uh, do be aware if you are gonna be using this, looking for things in here, uh, this does go back to 2009, so there will be some old, obviously, shows here, um, potentially topics that are um, may seem outdated, or no longer um, valid information, um, old information, um, but everything is dated. You can see when the sessions were actually actually presented, so you'll know how old they are. Um, we are librarians, so we archive everything, so uh, we will continue just adding to our archives here. And we also do have a search feature just recently added this week. Thank you very much to our uh, Library Commission IT people. So you can now search the archives, which with going on 10 years worth of sessions um, every week, it's a good thing to have finally. So you can search by, it will search the title, presenters and description of a session. Um, and you can search everything or you can just get the most recent ones if you want to. So um, definitely take a look there. Um, here's our most recent one. Our recording will be available. This is the one from a few weeks ago. Um, the recording and presentation will be here and links to um, the Millville Library's website when the recording is available. When the recording is done, I will send an email out to everyone who registered and uh, watched the show today, so you'll get notification of that as soon as it's ready. Should be sometime this afternoon, um, as long as YouTube cooperates with my uploading and processing of the video. Um, other than that, I hope you join us next week when our topic on Encompass Live is Why Diverse Literature Matters for Youth Services. Um, this is a presentation being done by Erica Rose, who is one of the faculty at the Library Science Program at the University of Nebraska in Omaha, and she's going to be on the show to talk about diverse literature in youth services. So definitely sign up for that next week and any of our other shows that you see on our list here. We have everything booked up through April and we're adding more all the time. So take a look at all of our uh, topics there and register for anything. Uh, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. You can see we've got links to our Facebook page, which I've opened over here. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do give us a like. We post reminders. Here's reminders for today's show that I posted saying, don't forget to log in for today's show. When our recordings are available, um, ads for the upcoming shows. So everything I post on here on our Facebook page. So if you, as I said, if you like Facebook and that's where you get a lot of information, give us a like over there and you keep up on what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much for being here with us this morning, Susan. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.